started with the music to Broken Mood, but um, at the end of last week I decided that I didn't like the unit that I mentioned then, because I taught it last year and it was pretty boring. And it was like one of those units where you gave them a formula for the area and then you practice doing that formula a few times on a sheet. And then the next lesson was a different formula. And so it wasn't contextualised. And we would do it in all different contexts every lesson, so it might be a field we were finding the area for, or a school, or something like that, but the whole unit wasn't grounded in something that we were doing. And then the assessment task at the end was to design a bedroom. So, designing was sort of the main link in all of that. And I did consider doing an interior designing unit where we just looked at houses and how they were designed, um, because volume can be used in swimming pools and stuff like that. Um, so I did consider that, uh, but I went to the first lesson on Friday and I got them to do a word wall and all I did was put the word measurement up and I asked every student to give me a word that linked in with measurement. And we started off with the normal length and width and um, imperial units instead of metric, followed by metric units. Um, and then as we were getting around the room and it's 26 kids, we would have been around the 15th, someone said light years. And I was like, wow, do you know what that is? What a light year is? And they all said no. I said, well, what would I measure in a light year? And they didn't know because they didn't know the size of it. Um, but that led to more discussions about large numbers because then someone Googled it and it's 9.5 times 10 to the power of 12 kilometres. So we all agree we know what kilometres are, but do we know what 9.5 times 10 to the power of 12 kilometres are? And they just kept coming back to this so I tried to move on and, and get other words, and we did fill up a whole whiteboard, um, but they just kept coming back to this idea, like, why don't stars stop burning? And I sort of said, well, I think your idea of how big a star is is not anywhere near how big a star is. And they were like, what? So they were interested in these really big numbers, as well as the really small, and I just happened, because in year 9 and 10 we do this, I just happened to remember that there was videos on the powers of 10 that zoom out of the Earth, um, by powers of 10 every second or something, so you get to see things go away. Earth ends up being 10 to the power of 7, so that gave them some idea of what 10 to the power of 12 might be. <laughs> um, I mean, they were closer to what their ideas were. And I just got this overwhelming sense that it was space that we were interested in, not finding the areas of fields, but something a bit more, a bit larger. And so I redesigned the unit. And instead of designing a bedroom, we will design a habitation module on the International Space Station. So that, because I had to have that design element for the assessment task to keep it a CD criterion, um, I decided to go with the module. And once I'd done that, I thought, well, the whole unit could be the International Space Station. There's a lot of measurements that go on their areas, um, even perimeters for their wiring and stuff like that. So I changed the whole focus and I just, I gave it a context rather than anything else. So we will still do all the same content, but we're just constantly going to be thinking back to the space station, where is that used in the space station. So I, I started developing a, a PowerPoint, which I've been through with the kids, and like for a whole lesson we basically just voiced questions, some of which I cannot answer. They were happy to take home for homework, because they all want to know. Um, and I started with this, man must rise above the earth to, t to the top of the atmosphere and beyond, for only thus will he fully understand the world in which he lives. I seriously considered that for a statement of inquiry mm -hmm. because it was saying that we needed to go further away to understand what we do here. I, I did change it more into kids speak <laughs> and so the statement of inquiry says something on the lines of in this enormous universe every measurement no matter how small counts and I, that was thinking about gravity and how we have to have all the pieces come together on the ISS and you can be a micrometer, kids tell me, a micrometer out and that could be enough for it all to just not work. Um, so we went with that instead of this. But I still put that on there and we mused on that today. Um, and they were all really excited about <laughs> this space station. So, and then we just looked at it. And so as we moved through, and we started perimeter today, we did do basic problems. I did start that lesson like a normal math lesson saying, um, what do you guys know about perimeter? I mean, but I had a double today. So the first double, the first part of the double, I spent going through the unit, and I even gave them the whole outline, told them all the steps. We looked at the inquiry cycle circles, and I pointed to each one to tell them what we're doing in each step. 
where their assignment fits in, it's over here and going further. Um, they wanted to start it today. <laughs> so oh, I sort of said, well, I'm not sure we have all the knowledge we need to go further yet. So we're going to start it tuning in. Um, and then I, I did say to them at certain points I've left in the planner that we will stop and look at the ISS and decide what shapes we need to learn the area of. So I've only set up rectangles, triangles and circles as the three things I've chosen. But when you look in there, you can see more shapes. And as we look at components individually, mm -hmm. there's trapeziums for many of the windows, there's cylinders. They were very excited about maybe learning the surface area of a cylinder. Um, and things like that. So there's heaps of shapes to go from. The content says rectangle, triangle, trapezoid, and rhombus, and parallelogram. So I'm sure we will find them there. I trust in that. And then beyond that, it's circles, it's circumference and area of circles. So there's plenty of windows and, and stuff we can do that for. So the lesson afterwards was still like a normal, what I would call a normal maths lesson. I walked in and said, what do you know about perimeter? And they had some formulas for rectangles. It was length plus width times two, rather than length plus length plus width plus width. Uh, they said they were all good with that. We moved on to problems where there were sides missing because they all agreed that that was the point that they maybe couldn't do. So they knew the length of all the sides they could work out the perimeter. And then it's just a simple thing at the end of the lesson to come back to this beautiful beast and say, where do you think they use perimeter? And it is a few simple places. It's things like the outside of the windows to make sure they're sealed. The sealant will have to be a perimeter. And the wiring. And I did find out how much wiring they use on the ISS. Um, but we did talk about relative size and all that. So as we were tuning in, before I did that second lesson on perimeter, we just talked about this. I put something like that up and said to them, what's that mean to you? They said, well, that's American. I said, I know. So do you know how big it is? And they went, a hundred? A hundred what? And they were all just like, we don't know. I don't know either. So I looked it up. It's 120 yards. Um, because they have this little bit at the end but when you score, I guess, I don't know, I don't know American football. <laughs> so um, we looked at that and then I said to the kids, what's that mean? And we have no concept. But it's funny that the imperial units were the first units they put on the board. Yards, inches, all of those were the first units that went on the board. When I asked them who used them, they couldn't tell me. When I asked them if mum and dad used them a lot at home, they couldn't tell me. Um, but they just know them. So I started off with that and said, well, that wasn't very helpful. So I found out this. I found out feet. And they all just still shrugging. But at that point, I still I had five or six jump on iPads straight away. And then they told me 110 meters. So then we tried to conceptualize that even. What's 110 meters? What do we have around here that's 110 meters? Our oval is just under, because we can't fit the 100 meter track going across on athletics day. That's the only way I know that. So now we've got an idea of the size and length of it out there on our very own oval. Um, but I mean, all this just had heaps of conversation. And I probably spent two lessons then, the word wall and the questions there, talking about size in general and powers of 10, followed by this lesson where we talked about the space station and its size and stuff like that. That was a lesson. We did talk about previous stations, because there are, the Skylab and the Air. Um, so we did talk about those, and they look a lot like parts of the current ISS. Um, I don't know that they're still out there. I think one of them came to ground. And that's about as far as we get. We didn't even get to talking about comparison of size or any of that, but I have set it up ready to go. But they're just so excited about doing mm. the same things they already know how to do in this different context. They want to start their assignment now, um, but we don't know anything about that. In the future, they're in groups, well they used to be, they're not anymore. I was hoping to give them countries because there are five main contributors to the International Space Station and make them a country and look up their country's involvement, their country's units and construct their country's segment of the ISS so that we can see how their measurements go and when we put together all the pieces, if they actually go together, which is the big concern of the ISS, mm -hmm. which is why measurement is so important. So it's the same stuff, I just, every lesson I'm probably going to be talking about space, which is probably what I prefer, <laughs> because I miss <laughs> science so much. Um, and this part of the curriculum was taken out, so talking 
about the solar system and about space is gone from science now. They, they, don't, they look at Earth and the way that Earth travels around the sun, the way we get seasons, but they don't look at the wider picture and they, the kids just really seem to want to. <laughs> so they're excited, I'm excited, and I'm just going to follow this line. The assessment task will only need a few words of adjustment instead of giving them a room to make. I'm just going to mm -hmm. ask them to look up the habitation module dimensions and work with that to construct the habitation module. So we will take a deeper look at how astronauts sleep and all those sorts of things. But I think they'll find that a lot more interesting. It seems like that one. So, yeah, I would like the eight teachers to join me. You do not have to. It will be slightly more work. I'm trying to stay ahead of it and have things sort of being produced as I'm going. And I think I'm a little bit ahead of other people, so that keeps me abreast of it. But I just thought we'd make it more of a topic that's got a context that we can discuss more about and that is perhaps more debatable and perhaps just gets us thinking big, really big. Mm -hmm. And if they're willing to, because by year nine when we teach scientific notation, they don't want to. <laughs> so if I could teach them scientific notation now, like and get a move on on that, and then understand understanding of the distance and stuff, I think that would be that would be worth it because they know how to do the area of a rectangle and a triangle, and they're very close to a circle. I'm pretty sure I could just tell them the formula, and get them to practice it, and they would not. I don't really want to do those things. I want to make it interesting. So yeah, I did send that stuff out. I will be putting it up, but it, it'll be work in progress. So when I work on it. I'll have to re-save it on the public drive probably once a week or something so that it's there. But yeah, it's just a thought. And it's just a way to contextualise something that would otherwise be a fairly boring chunk of 